So where are you heading off today? Well, everyone I'm talking to mentions the Donor Tissue Bank of Victoria. Right. So I'm going there to make a withdrawal. <laughs> and Actually. what do you see there? Eh? <laughs> I don't know. I think heart valves and skin mainly. Uh huh. Mm. That's what you can donate. Yeah. As, as well as eyes and other Re really? eyes, I think, yes. Eyes? That's what I... Anyway, come back and tell me. Okay. Yeah, make a list. We'll just go in here. Yep. Um, now. Wow. So we store all of our heart valves and skin in liquid nitrogen jewels. So that's at about minus 190 degrees Celsius. Right. So basically any time we're going into these tanks, we have to put on all the safety equipment. Right. So. Now if, where's my one though? Um, unfortunately, we only have one of these. You only have one apron. Yep. What if you spill barbecue sauce on that? We shouldn't be eating with it on. Why? But All also, right. what if I'm here, which I am? You are. Um, I'll just have to get you to stand back a little bit. Is that far enough back? That should be far enough. Because I don't want to get heart valve on me. No. Okay. And then, um, so as you can see, we have the vapour here. Yeah. Um, so the vapour phase is at around minus 190 degrees. Right. And if we pull one of these drawers out, so we store our heart valves in these packagings. Is that a heart valve? So we have heart valves and we have skin tissue. So heart valves are in this type of packaging. So there's one aortic valve in that piece of packaging. We do have a barcode label as well. Oh good. Which is, oh, yeah. but um, so these foil tags we can sterilize those in an autoclave and that way that's a sterile tag whereas the barcode's not sterile so. Right. Yeah. You know what's funny to me is that of all the things I've seen in this building that heart valve is making me a bit wobbly. Is it? Yeah it's just making me a bit. Yeah. Yeah isn't that funny it's a bit gross. Some people that does happen to. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm. um, and the other tissue we have in here is also, um, so the skin tissue as All right, well. Alright, give us a go of the skin tissue, let's see how I go with that. So the skin tissue is, there's one piece of skin in here. So with the, the skin that's used to um, treat the burns victims, mm -hmm. um, so it's used as a temporary dressing um, wow. and basically just protects the um, patient from, um, helps the burn heal and also protects it from bacteria and things getting into the burn. So I can donate my heart valves and my skin? You can, yep. Can I donate any of this gear while I'm alive? Um, yes, yeah, so we do have two living donor, heart, two living donor programs. Uh, we have a living donor heart program where someone undergoing a heart transplant, their actual heart as a whole isn't functional but the heart valves are still okay, so they donate their heart to us and then they get a new heart. So you can get the dodgy heart for spare parts and yes, they get so, a fresh good one? Yes, so right. we dissect the heart valves out and keep those and they can go to another patient. Okay. Um, and also someone undergoing a hip replacement, the piece of bone removed during that operation can come to us as well and then that can be reused in someone else. What do you do most at work though? I mean you're not standing in here in the barbecue no. most of the day. What um, you... Most of the day we're probably processing the transplant tissue so that happens in our clean rooms on the, the third floor of this building. Um, so we have to process all the tissue so for example the heart so we'll get the whole heart and then we have to dissect the heart valves out of that whole heart. Um, we also process the skin tissue, the tendons, the bones. Um, the bones we may mill up and then freeze dry. Um, so that goes out as a, milled, as a milled product. Put them in the old Ziploc, Sharpie. Not quite. <laughs> um, no, so the milled bone all goes into um, sterile jars. Um, and then it'll be, again, the barcode labels applied and packaged up. And um, yeah, it's all validated packaging. 
um, to make sure that it stays sealed and sterile. Cool, do you love it? I do. I've been here about 19 years now, it's great. your day what happens in the, yep. you know when you become you know yeah so um, we normally start around 8 in the morning mm -hmm. and what we do is we screen um, for potential donors um, we try and identify people who might be able to donate tissue through the donor tissue bank and how who are the, who are those people that um, could potential the reason or the way that the tissue bank was originally set up we're yeah. part of the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine and um, because of that, we actually have access or um, access to the information that the coroner receives. So uh -huh. we're able to identify people that way. So we have potentially um, around a, uh, many thousands of people who are reported to the coroner mm -hmm. every year. And we can um, look at the information. It can be medical information. It can be um, information that comes in with the police report. Um, and we can get a bit of an idea about the suitability or the potential for a person to be a donor. But what is that suitability? What is the thing um, that you're looking for? Yeah, so well, there's a number of different things. And one of the main things is the age criteria. Uh -huh. So anywhere between three months and 70 years of age, someone can potentially be a tissue donor. Well, that's almost um, everyone. Yeah, really, absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, what, yeah. what we say to people when they ask about am I suitable to be a donor or anything like that, um, we just say just um, don't censor yourself. Um, lots of things change um, your ability to be a donor, mm -hmm. but just if you can um, read about the information, find out as much as you can, make your decision about what you want to donate, whether it's organs, tissues, and eyes, cornea, or all of them. It mm -hmm. could be any one of those or, or all of them. Um, but the most important thing is let your family know what your decision is because uh -huh. that's the person we'll speak to, um, your senior next of kin um, at the time of your death. So that senior next of kin, that you have had to have told them you want to or can they make a decision? Um, well, the Human Tissue Act is a piece of legislation that supports us in our work. Yeah. Um, so um, if someone has said that they want to be, a, um, that they want to donate, either in writing or verbally, and there's some um, provisos with that, mm. then we could act on that. But we always consult with um, family, uh, mm. with the next of kin, um, because we actually speak with them and find out other health information yeah. in relation to that donor. And yeah. it's important that we get a feel for the family's comfort with that. Mm. Um, bearing in mind that tissue donation can only take place within 24 hours of circulatory death, um, we are dealing with someone most likely it's their very worst day of their life. Yeah. Um, so it's a really it's a delicate area, it's a difficult area, um, and families are, are already emotionally quite raw. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to be adding to their grief. Uh, we want to be able to offer them something positive or something that might um, give them um, a bit of relief. Um, perhaps not on the day, but in the future, knowing that their loved one was able to help yeah. them. So, are you the person that goes and talks to the family? Um, yep, yeah, I'm part of a team of nurses, so we're yeah. all nurses. Is that your background? Yes, nursing. Yeah, we're yeah. all we're all nurses, mm -hmm. um, and um, we've obviously had um, further training or further um, uh, support in becoming tissue donation mm -hmm. specialists. Um, and um, we do all of the assessment and we consult with the, the, the uh, forensic pathologists and we also consult with the coroner as well as the senior next of kin. So it's a very controlled process. There's a lot of consultation and a lot of discussion along and through those. Um, but it has to happen within 24 hours. It does, yeah. Do you ever follow some of that tissue to the next stage? Um, you know, to, to the release? Yeah, well, to yeah, the, you know, we where actually, it goes. Yeah, we actually receive letters um, from recipients um, to pass on to the families. Oh, They're signed with their first name, but we get some beautiful letters, and um, they really realise the impact that where the tissue has come from mm. and that they wouldn't be doing what they're doing now if it wasn't for the generosity of that family at such yeah. an awful time. So it's really lovely and sometimes we'll have donor families who write back to those recipients and there's an exchange thereafter, yeah. um, which is really lovely. I'm uh, Acting Deputy Commissioner Luke Cornelius with the Victoria Police and I'm also on the Committee of Management for Donor Tissue Bank Victoria. Oh wow, okay, what does that mean? What, talk, talk to us about Donor Tissue. Oh okay, so Donor Tissue Bank um, is uh, um, an organisation that's run by VIFM um, and it does all of the Donor Tissue Banking for Victoria. So 
people who have suffered serious burns, um, we supply the skin grafts. Oh. Uh, people who need uh, work done on uh, uh, heart valves, uh, you know, a whole range of uh, issues. Um, we're very fortunate that very generous people and families have thought about uh, how they might contribute to the lives of others after they've passed. And, and that's so, yet another thing that they do through yeah. VIFM. Yep, so they... Oh my goodness. Uh, I hope everyone signs up to become yeah, a, yeah. a donor, organ donor. I've got the card. Okay. Very simple. You just log on to the website, mm. donate to life and fill out the details and they send you a card so that if the worst happens, people will know what your wishes are. Yeah. He was a giving person and so I'm not surprised that he donated tissue and that he donated parts of himself to make other lives better because that's who he was. Uh, well, this drum was actually found across the other side of the shed there, so it did go off with a fairly substantial bang. But then I was obviously put back here for a reason. I just want to say thank you because the knowledge that you have been able to have your life because of my brother makes me feel really proud. Even in your passing, you can still change people's lives in a way that you can never imagine. That's by being a tissue donor. Yeah, really great. Yeah. Really good. Um, I found out that they have to take like your skin donation within 24 hours of your death. That's really important. Right. So you have to. They have to know that you want to, to, to donate. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 24 yeah. hours. Otherwise, it's too too long. Yeah. Did you see? Any... Yeah, I saw some bits and pieces. How'd you go? How'd you feel? Sick. Yeah. <laughs> Quite sick, actually. And what are they like? What are the the, the, the people, people? Deal with that all the time? Strange. Weird. Weird people. Mm. Yeah. Before or because of the job? It's hard yeah. to tell. Yeah.